This is Tony the Tiger Lopez, and you're listening to The Break It Down Show. And now, The Break It Down Show with John and Pete. Champ, how you doing, Champ? Good, man. How's it guys going, man? Terrific, terrific. Hey, we want to talk to you about a lot of things. I want to hear some of the stories from your absolutely fascinating past. And I know you got a lot of those stories, but then we got something big. The elephant in the room is that you were running for mayor of Sacramento. Yeah. Man. You know what? I'm running as a non-politician, and my campaign sugar slogan should be for just for common sense. For just common for common sense. sense. Because no one up there seems to have it. Well... Man, I, I really want to say this to you because I told you I was going to come up here and challenge you. And you know I'm a uh, – let's not mince the facts. I'm a big fan. Always have been. But when a non-politician runs, especially in a place like Sacramento, this is a political center of California. Yeah. Do you think that people can get through all the hype, all the noise – and get to Common Sense Tony, do you think that you're going to reach people? Do you think that they're going to be paying attention on that level? Or do you think that – I think what I'm asking is do you think you can fight through partisan politics and get down to Common Sense, man-to-man, uh, so to speak, and really engage people? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Roll the credits. There we go. <laughs> well, you know what? You know what it is. It's just that. Uh, well, okay. One of us running has a million for to run. I'm not going to mention no names, Steinberg, but he's got like a million, uh, a million for to run. Uh huh. Here's what that tells me because I use common sense. Here's what that means to me. If you're running for mayor of Sacramento and I give you twenty thousand dollars, you're going to owe me a favor. You're going to owe me $20,000. Ab- you're going to owe me something. That is absolutely true. Well, check this out. Million four. Mm-hmm. How many favors does he owe? A million four. It sounds four. like a million and four of them, yeah. Okay, so watch. check this out. So you as as mayor, let's say you win. You as mayor, what are you going to do? What's best for Sacramento or what's best for that million four you got to pay back? Real talk. What is it going to be for? You tell me. Well, I think we've seen time and again that when somebody is beholden to – a cause or a, whatever that donor is, that's you're going to have to vote some things in the best interest of that donor, if not all things. That's right. You are going to sacrifice some level of integrity about how you vote. That's right. And me, I started with nothing. How's that song go? I started from the bottom, now I'm here. I started, <laughs> well, yeah, that's, that's really what it is. Yeah. You know, and, and, and so, you know. I, man, I was born here, raised here, won world titles here, made Sacramento millions of dollars back in the day. You know, not that long ago. You though. know, for well, our listeners who are not familiar with Tony the Tiger Lopez, we love what? him because we're local. <laughs> yeah, there's about three or four of them that don't know who you are. Man. Okay. I, I imagine. I don't we'll know. Them, man. But in in uh, my circles, man, you need no introduction. Right on, man. But as... Uh, as a proper introduction goes, when you were uh, the world champion, you came from Sacramento, like you said. Mm-hmm. You boxed out of here. Mm-hmm. You were uh, your when you won the belt against Rocky Lockridge. Which, by the way, anybody who hasn't seen that fight, go to YouTube and watch the battle royal that was Tony the Tiger Lopez stealing the belt from Rocky Lockridge. That was a tough fight, year. though. That was, that was a Ring Magazine yeah. Fight of the Year. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, It should have been someone's fight of the year because it should have took a lot out of me. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Boy, it made me change my learn some more defense, that's for sure. Well, when you – let's I really want to go back and talk about that <laughs> because it feeds into – the way that you're running for mayor. It really does. It yeah. feeds into the way that you've done business, just the exactly. way that you've conducted yourself as an individual. You don't take no shit from nobody. No. Watch this. No, I don't. But you know what? I don't take it because I think I'm tough. I'm Tony. Totally tight. That's not, that's not the reason why I don't take it. Mm-hmm. I don't take anybody's crap because I'm Tony Lopez and I just don't take no shit. I yeah. just don't. No. And I, yes. Well, you know what? I'm not going to give you no shit because I don't want to see a left hook, <laughs> but also, because you have been that kind of stand-up guy. I mean, your whole career, you defended your title 14 times? 15, 15 title 15 fights. 15 title fights. Yeah. And then, and I don't want to fast forward through your entire career, but when you walked away from boxing, you walked away from, your, from, from the game on your own terms. Yeah. And then the thing that 
when Pete and I first met you, we were um, now Pete. When you were when you were the champ, mm-hmm. Pete used to work at Tower Records. That's right. Yeah, and you used Tower. to go in there. Yeah. Did you yeah. guys talk yeah. about this? Yeah, we, no, just briefly. We, yeah. we, we uh-huh. recorded that other show. Yeah. Briefly talked about it, but yeah, he would come in. He'd have the big sunglasses on, a lot of money, stack of CDs, and this is back like when people didn't buy twenty CDs at one shot ever. Mm-hmm. You know, but Tony would come out twenty CDs later. Yeah. You know, and you'd be like, "Who's the dude with the sunglasses buying the twenty CDs?" <laughs> yeah. That's Tony the Tiger. You know, the guy yeah. with the black eyes. That was yeah, me. right. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like he looked like he got his. He looked like he got in a. Uh, got hit by a train yeah why is he buying 20 cds well because he's the champ yeah he's the champ i mean you knew that from your boxing yeah, uh, yeah. affiliation in sacramento but when you did that your uh your persona around here was huge you were for guys like us i mean we looked at you and went man that's a self-made guy yeah and that i think is the difference whether you're talking about uh your endeavors in the political arena or however you carry yourself and one of the things we like about you is yeah you're not you know it's not that you don't take any shit because you're uh filled with left hooks a guy in your how old are you 52 52 52. but hey hey young fellas out there hey man i still feel like i'm 22 okay i wouldn't fuck with him yeah i'm just saying yeah you don't want it you don't want that now you know what and we've had this talk before i mean pete spent uh, many years over there in the sandbox defending our country, and uh, man, I'm a fourth degree black belt. Right. I don't need to hear no shit from nobody. Yeah, right. But I'll tell you what, I'm not fucking with Tony no. the Tiger Lopez. <laughs> no, because I'll tell you what, I wasn't. Huh. I wasn't the world champion. I wasn't the world champion. And yeah. the thing is, when you go through any kind of curriculum where you're learning to, to learning to fight, and by the way, you know, I was a younger, fitter man learning to fight, but. You carry that with you, but the level of competition that you grew accustomed to and came to dominate 14 times, um, I know you defended it 15 times, but you no, know. No, you were you, right, 14 times. I won it one time. So. Yeah. <laughs> right. So you were right, my man. But that level of competition, that's something that people take for granted. They're like, oh, I don't, I think I could take him. He's the washed up old boxer. You know what? No, you couldn't. No. You don't get in that level of competition and realize the best of what you were able to become. Many people don't pull that out of themselves and that never mind world championships and all that stuff. Cause that that's great in the attention and the belts and all that stuff, which we want to hear about, <laughs> but that's what makes your life experience different. You visited a place where you challenged yourself in ways that everybody else has not. And you know what? You're right. And, and, I, and I say that in the humblest way possible. Because in, in any athlete, in, in, in order for any athlete, and I don't give a shit what you are, football, baseball, basketball, whatever it is, mm-hmm. you have to, when the guys go home, you stay there. And, and you hear that. That's a cliche that everybody hears. But no. And, and, and check this out. When I'm done training, I was done training. I went home too. Yeah. But I exerted myself. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, it's true. A, a good fighter, a world champion will tell you, you'll never have a, 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 a any tougher fight than, than your best sparring day in the gym. Because when you spar in the gym, you ain't banging on nobody, but you're working hard. Mm-hmm. And you're practicing stuff. And they say, okay, Tony, you're going to learn this move today. And you're going to practice this stuff. So guess what? You're going to get hit a thousand times before you perfect it. You know, just because it doesn't work the first 599 times doesn't mean it's not going to work. You got to keep practicing until you get it. Mm-hmm. And to have the, the, the I guess the, the word I'm looking for is audacity in yourself to keep doing that, knowing you're going to get hit, but sooner or later you will get it, you'll understand it and move your head the way you're supposed to move your head. But to have the audacity to just keep doing it is almost, you need mental help, I guess, right? <laughs> <laughs> but But there's a long, I mean, you know, like, I'm a goof off, and I've always been a goof off. I've been a goof off in school. I've been a goof off at work. I've been a goof off. I, I just like having life. Goof off. I mean, I like having fun. I don't like taking things too serious. Even in boxing, when when I, my, me and my brother used to have fights all the time, you know, not you know arguments, because he's real serious. Uh-huh. Well, guess what? I'm the total opposite way. You know, you know he's Mister Prim and Proper. I'm Mister 
let's just jump in some shorts and go. I don't really care. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm still like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll dress up if I have to. If I have to, but if I don't have to, I we're I sitting in this man's office and he's wearing about two thousand dollars worth of clothing. <laughs> I just want to put that out there. Go ahead. No, Who that's because I had to. Just today. No, <laughs> I just came back. From, I'll tell you that later. But anyways, but you know, so 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 you know, when you get out there, uh, you, you get any athlete that carries over to the top, it's because they give more. Mm -hmm. You know, not because they're better. Hey, dude, check this out. I'm not, I wasn't the baddest dude in Sacramento. I wasn't the baddest dude in, in, in boxing in, in my gym, probably. I really wasn't. I'm not, I'm not just saying that because I, I can't. I was a motherfucker of a gym. I Jesus. just want to say that. Yeah. No, <laughs> you know, and for real, you know, you know what I had that everybody didn't have, so I, everybody else didn't have? The will to win. Uh, and yeah. that's really it, man. And there's, I mean, shit, there's a lot, there's, there's more fighters in that gym that can take better shots than me. They had better jabs than I did. I wasn't a great fighter. I wasn't great. I just refused to quit. And, and, you know, it just, but that's my life. I mean, no matter what I do in my life, I'm going to refuse to quit. If I want to, like, I'm running for mayor. Yeah. Check this out. I refuse when I first start off. You, watch this. Because Steinberg's running and everybody's going, oh, yeah, I know Steinberg. Well, well, so do I. That's why I'm running. And so, and this Angela Asprey, she's running. And some other guy, and I don't remember his name. Uh, he's in a wheelchair. But, uh, I mean, he's a nice guy. And, and he's running. And I don't know nothing about them. But, you know, I know enough about Sacramento to know that it's not going the way that it should be going, that, that everybody has decisions. I went to a meeting tonight, and they were talking about Broadway, refurbishing re, re Broadway uh, in Sacramento. Well, they're trying to make it like K Street Mall. It's not going to work. Well, they ref I asked questions. They didn't give me the answers that were good enough to satisfy me. May, they left me answer, with their answers thinking me, me going, hmm. That's really not going to work. You know, uh, what? they, they want to go from four lanes on Broadway to two lanes okay. and, ex and expect traffic to still go at the same speed. Wrong. Uh, you're taking, they're taking away half the parking areas on the side of the road. You know, you can park on the side of the street well, and, and doing the, in, in like, like a K Street mall. Yeah. yeah. And then they're saying, okay, but here is, it, it's all, like, even in downtown Sacramento, it's, it's okay. Watch, I'm just going to say it's stupid. Watch this. You're putting 20,000 people in a condensed area of Sacramento, downtown Sacramento. What are, what are you missing? You're missing two things. What are you missing? Hotels and parking spaces. Where the hell do they expect these people to park? Where the hell do you want people? You want people to come into Sacramento, watch the King, watch concerts, and watch this. You don't have the hotel capacity to do it. You don't have the parking to do it. So what the hell are you gonna do? Just park park ticket people to death? I mean, they're already doing that here in Sacramento. It's, it went to six o'clock now, and the ticket prices just went up to another ten dollars. Before that arena opens, I, don't, I hope uh, Sacramento knows this, but it's going to go to twenty four hours a day in downtown Sacramento. No kidding, dude. We are not the Golden Sacramento. One Arena. It's under construction right now right in downtown now, Sacramento, dude, and we drove by it yeah. on our way over here, yeah. thinking, "Look at this place. Yeah, yeah. this thing is huge. It's huge." But watch this: we don't have a wharf. Mm -hmm. We don't make movies. Mm -hmm. So how are you going to pay for it? We have nothing here to bring outside. Watch. Okay, watch. Oh, yeah, we can just keep giving local, uh, raising taxes and parking tickets and this and that. and this. That's stupid. That's retarded. Who thought of that? What idiot said, here, let's put a 20 big ass building down the middle of downtown Sacramento, screw up all the traffic, screw up all this. Man, I had 18,000 people in Arco Arena. And Arco, and Arco Arena is out in the boonies, right? Right. It's yep. out there. Four hours prior to that fight, I'm going, I have to be at the arena to start mm -hmm. getting ready. The, my contract's four hours. Mm -hmm. I have to be there. So I'm going down Highway 5 from my dad's house to South Side. Remember coming down Highway 5, going over 80 right here? Er, stop. Traffic's at dead stop four hours prior. Yeah. People trying to get into Arc Arena. Far out place. And here's the truth. To Arc, Arc Arena to watch the champ, and you're sitting in the traffic jam. Yeah, I had to call the motor who called the Highway Patrol to get me in. That's crazy. Wow. Now, three and a half hours after the fight's over, I'm leaving because you need you to get ready. You know, you yeah. get press. Got to do all that stuff. So three and a half hours later, after the fight's over, I'm leaving, taking off, in, in, you know, in the car, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna have my window out the sunroof, waving to this because you know why I'm waving to you because there's still about five thousand people in that parking lot. So now, mind you, it's in the middle of nowhere. Right yeah. at the time, it was '94. That's yeah. right. Now you're putting twenty thousand people in a condensed area. Well, there's no parking. There's no hotel. There's nowhere to go. There's nothing, dude. Where are they going to park? Oh, they said, and then, then the powers to be go, oh, well, they, cause I asked. Yeah. You know, I go, so where are they going to park at? Like, duh. Oh, they can use a uh, rainy field. Um, my first question, my first question, uh, well, hey, uh, since we got a, 
by the time it's over and closed, it's going to be close to 500,000 or 500 million or not 500 million dollar building with all the stuff that's it's right. all said and done with. So I'm saying, okay, well, do we get a piece of that money in the parking lot? Oh, well, no, that's Randy Fields. Yeah. What dipshit thought of that? Far, I mean, that's just dumb. How far, far is Randy Fields it, from it, that? It's not far. Right. It's, a, it's a good walk, but it's not far. That's you don't a hardy do walk. It. That's a hardy walk. Yeah, yeah, it's not close. It's not far. But we get no money. But yeah. we still have the bill. The right. people in Sacramento got to pay the bill and they, and they reap the benefits. I, I would just that. like to say there aren't enough politicians who come right out and say, what dipshit thought of that? Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. You know, and, and then, and then uh, the, the, the uh, I, mean, I mean, it's just ridiculous. They're, like, again, you, you got some people down, uh, trying to change Broadway down. They're going to slow traffic down. They're going to go to four lanes or two lanes. They, there's different designs. Um, well, let me interject this about Broadway because some of our listeners live elsewhere and never been to Sacramento. Okay. Broadway in your town, whatever fucking town it is, mm-hmm. imagine it because that's what Broadway looks like. Yeah. It looks like a street called Broadway. Yeah, it does. And all of the bustle and activity that comes down there, imagine, listeners, that your Broadway is four lanes because in, in a lot of towns it is. Even in yeah. San Francisco it is. Mm-hmm. Now imagine you close that down to two lanes. What happens? That's that's the very definition of a bottleneck. Okay, watch this. You close it down. Let's say let's say they close it down two lanes, and they have a they have a parking lane on the on, let's say you going. They have a parking lane on your right. Then they're going to have uh, your the parkers are on the on the right. Then your lane, and then between your lane and the the middle lane will be. A, a, oh, I'm sorry, that's wrong. The parking lane, a bike lane, and then your lane. And then in the middle, in some areas, we'll have a left turn lane only. Right. So I'm thinking, okay, wait a minute. Don't they use that left turn lane only now to get around other people? You don't think that's going to happen over there? Because right now, there's a ton of traffic. There's going to just be more of that. There's going to be a ton of it. Mm-hmm. And, and watch this. I, I mean, so so here's, here's what Sacramento's doing that I don't get. They're putting all this damn infrastructure is good. We need it because we need, we're going to grow whether we like it or not, which is great. Yep. We, we need, I want to grow. Mm-hmm. I, I want to, I want to see this become a big city. I would love to see this yeah. become a big city. Sure. I think it has a lot of charm and personality in it. <laughs> but don't you think we need to find parking space for the people that come back to make this a big, beautiful city? Yeah. I'm thinking, like Broadway. They have, they're taking away half the parking area of where they want the people to go. Mm-hmm. That where all the shops are. They, they depend, they're going to depend on a business owner to fork out to fix up their frontage of their building. Right? So, they have to do that. Right. There's but wait, Now, the promise, taking, though, to the business owner is if we beautify this area, you can have more foot traffic. Okay. But watch this. How many, how many, how many months out of the year? Five? Is that going to pay your bills for the year? Because remember, you got to fix up the front. You gotta, you, remember, they're taking away half your parking space right. up front because mm-hmm. now you only got the indentions where you can park and then it's going to come out and they're going right. to put street lights and trees and up there, right. all that crap out there. So you're taking away half the parking. There's no parking. People, you're going to crowd the neighborhoods with parker people trying to get around traffic. At, at I'll tell you what, does plus. not need is less parking. That's yeah, right. It's already I'm, hard I'm just to park saying. Over there. Yeah, so yeah. if they decide to say, if they said, yeah, we're going to put, uh, you know, a two story parking garage here, maybe one over here. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's going to work. Yeah. Why not? That's a great idea. It's beautiful. On yeah. paper, it looks really nice. I, I looked at it and went, wow, this is cool. I've sat in community meetings where they have these kind of projects, and, and what they typically lack are, are is the Dumb data. Sense. Well, and because they're not, they don't have a simple question. What is the purpose of this thing? Is it to generate more business? Yeah. You know, what is what is the And the there has goal? to be a purpose besides right. this guy, whoever the dipshit is, yeah. right, thinks it's a good idea. Yeah. And sometimes those good ideas, like you said, look great on paper. But there's there are some ways to find out. Like, oh, no. They said, they said they can do it. I don't believe it. How about... Looking at the traffic patterns. Yeah, how many how many cars go through that part of? I Broadway? was going to ask that question. That's a great question. And, 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 and so they said they knew, but they didn't give the answer. They didn't say how many. Right. And, and I'm thinking, don't lie. I mean, come on. I, I used to go down Broadway all the time with those cruise lines. But, but you know, you still go down Broadway a lot. And there's yeah. a lot of cars. It, yeah. So I'm thinking, dude. Sometimes it's crowded on Broadway. Now, it's never really packed, but it gets crowded at times. You know, five o'clock, eight o'clock in the morning, it gets pretty packed. When you take it from four lanes to two lanes, it's going to stop. I don't right. give a shit what you say. Traffic's going to. You, going to be crazy. You can't tell me, oh, we can change the light pattern so it lasts longer. Shut up. That's Wait, not, where's, you know? Where is everybody going to park? That's well, everything question. that you do to a light pattern in a direction to 
increase flow, you're gonna you have to take away from somewhere else. Yeah. Now, if they can say, well, here are the places where we take away because there's lighter traffic going these directions, that would be one thing. Yeah. But nobody has compiled that data. They didn't present any they of that didn't traffic any of that pattern stuff. data because nope. that stuff exists. Yeah, no, exists. I know it exists, but you know, they, 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 you go in that meeting today, and because I was asked some questions. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, you know, they didn't give me answers. They didn't, their answers weren't good enough to satisfy me because, right. and I don't even live there, but I go down there. I'm in that area. You know, there's a couple of places. Well, I and you have there. to keep your eye on representing the people in that area potentially yeah. because you, know, you might just be their mayor. Right. You know, so, so, and if they're ticked, you know, they're going to, yeah. I'm going to hear it. You know, and then I'm going to say, well, you know, I went to that meeting and no one really said nothing. And, and, and they really gave you, they, they gave you some BS answers because I would, if I lived there, I wouldn't have accepted that. Yeah. I'd have been more vocal, but yeah. I don't live there. I'm just there to observing, you know, find out how this shit really works. Right. You know? So and, now they're suddenly, they're asking you, well, what, what business is it of your, you know, and, and perhaps treating you like you don't live there. What do you care? Yeah. Regardless of the fact that you're asking the right question. Which is, who are we impacting? And what is it we're trying to do? Yeah. Because well, if we're going to have a negative impact on some citizen that lives in that area, we have to give them an upside. It has to be, okay, well, you're sacrificing this convenience because we're giving you more foot traffic and your revenue goes up. Right. There has to be something. There's got to be right? something. There's got, something's got to give. It's like, it's like the K Street Mall. You want to put all this business and traffic in this. Okay, but where are they going to park? Yeah. yeah. There's no parking. Mm-hmm. I mean... They want people to use mass transit. Really? Okay. I'm just saying, look, you want someone, to, the first time you come leave your, your car on Richard Boulevard and go to the Kings game, your car come back, there's some hypodermic needles, some couple of prostitutes and crazy people out there. Right. You're never going to do it again. And you won't do it with your family. Yeah. That's just dumb. Right. So they, they have to clean it up. If they can clean it up, which is going to be kind of hard, uh, they're going to have to clean mass transit. That means they're going to have to... Wash the whole inside of that of the, of the BART cars out, the train cars, whatever they're called. Uh, uh, they have to clean them up because I wouldn't put my kid on there. Right. Hell no, I would, there's no way in the world I'm put my kid. I wouldn't put my wife on there. This is one of the mistakes they make with these kind of things. That they want to make the the experience more palatable to people that want to walk yeah. bikers. They want to increase the access, but what they don't understand is that. Out here in the Western states, we like the freedom of having our own car. Right. That's right. I want to That's get right. up and yeah. get out whenever I when want. I want. Yeah. You know, and I'll walk half a mile to my car if I have to, but I'm a whole lot happier if my car is only five minutes away. You right. Know? Yep. And uh, those things matter to us. So until they're willing to deal with that, that issue where I want my car, then you can build these things and make them, you know, and say, well, they're going to use mass transit. No, they're not. No, I don't, I don't think so either. I, I really don't. I, I don't. I don't think, I, I don't think, uh, Regional transit is going to put that much money into into doing this. I, I I don't see them doing it. Well, and even if if they do do it that way, it doesn't mean that the people want that. You have to figure out how to educate them and change that behavior. You right. Know? And you, as a mayor, you're going to say, "Hey, listen, this is great. I want it. I want it. If this is going to help out businesses, that's great. But if we're going to build this thing once, and we're not going to unbuild it, right. so can we?" Take a little extra time and get this right. Do it right. Let's let's get some data. Let's put have some, some questions answered. I mean, gee, yeah. put some park. Let people. If, if you want people to walk, let them walk. Let it sounds like you're there. asking for the simple things, man. Yeah, yeah it is. Everybody's simple. overcomplicating all this shit. You're just trying to say, where's people going to park? Yeah, yeah, you know, it's because watch. If I had to park two or three blocks up, but if I had to park in this parking space, it's on Broadway. I walk out. I park on there, and I'm on Broadway. I walk, then I'm going to walk. Yeah. Well, shit. Let's go check this out. It's all new and stuff. I'm gonna go check it out. Yeah. The, the shops gonna be new. They're gonna. Have, they're gonna. Have, it's just. It'll be just it's like nice. It's stuff. lit up. Yeah. Walk, it's, yeah. It's gonna be nice. Yeah. Then it's worth walking down. Then it, then it's worth going out on a weekend. Go take my wife. Going. Hey, let's go down Broadway. Now let's go check out that new restaurant on Broadway. Yeah. yeah. You know, because then it's worth it to me. Because I ain't gotta walk twenty blocks. So I ain't gotta take my transit. Because I'm not gonna take my transit. Right. You know. Yeah. Uh, you know. So I don't know, man. There's just everybody so has different ideas. besides parking. What? What are the? I mean, you're getting into a race where you're an underdog. When well, that's fine for you. You don't, you don't care about it. Yeah, exactly. Right. You're not afraid of that. <laughs> you're getting into you got in the ring with Rocky Locker. Huh, so yeah. Right. With what, yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> hey, who are your yeah, man? man. He couldn't do nothing. <laughs> So, so you have this this big, huge hill to climb. You're talking about parking, but what else is important? What are what are these other candidates missing that that you think that you're different? Before different? we address that, I just want to say we got listeners right now who are shaking their heads, thinking, "Man, these guys try to act like they kick it with Tony the Tiger." They Tony the Tiger don't know Pete because he just said, "Hey, Pete, you walk back to your car, and there's dope and prostitutes." Like like Pete was going to say, "Oh, that's bad." 
Was it better? No. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, time. sorry. That's my date. That's my date. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, no, we're just making jokes. But yeah, what what other platforms were? Because um, I mean, that's not what the platform they're running on. But it's just no. one example no, that shows what? how you speak for the people. In, now, in actuality, man, I, I, you know everybody has their points. I, I, watch you. You ask me the problems of Sacramento. I'm going to tell you that we have a homeless problem. We have a job problem. We have, you know, we have an elderly problem. We need we need to clean up Sacramento. It, it, but it's all common. See, this is why I want to a common sense campaign because it's all common sense. Watch this. Kevin Johnson said a year or two ago, I don't remember what it was, a year or two ago, he did a speech to Sacramento. They said, oh, we're going to house the homeless. So when people when people say something, I think it is a challenge. So, you know, I, I, I think I know everybody. Mm-hmm. So I go out and about and it takes me a couple of days and I start asking, talking to people that, that built stuff. You know, that, hey man, how can we do this? How can we bring affordable housing? Uh, when, whenever it was a year or two ago when he was talking, I think it was two years ago, when he was talking to the, uh, the state of speech of Sacramento, uh, you know, back then we can do a, a condominium uh, for two for and make money at $3,000. Dude, who can do that? Wow. Ain't nobody can. Ain't nobody. Ain't, we can, what probably cost us maybe, nah, maybe, three, maybe a little bit more than $3,000 today, yeah. but not much. Yeah. Because um, the city will, offer, will obviously give you the land. The city will also develop it, which which means in, in developing this land, all you really need is, is sewage because um, you don't need no foundation for the houses. Right. Uh, these things. It's an easy place to build it, yeah. simple structures. Yeah. You know, it, it's so, it's so, it's just, Japan's been doing it for a lot of time now. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're boxcars. Out of the, the train yeah, boxcars, yeah, they've been doing it for what a million years now, and they're pulling them out of the ocean 10, 15 years later, and they're rust free. They're beautiful, like they did, like the day they threw them in the water. And you know, each wall since they're steel, each wall holds hundreds of millions of pounds. You know, so they're 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 they're, sturdy, they're not going anywhere. There's no foundation for them. There's a lot less wood. You cut them up, open them up. You can you can make them look like this house on the inside, and, and they're amazing. I mean, and we have people here in Sacramento that can do that. So, and, and back then we had a deal with Japan to ship them to, to San Diego for, wow, was it three or three fifth, 350 bucks a pop? Wow. Dude, come on now. Cause we wanted, we were going to buy masses of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, uh, uh, and so we were going to buy a lot of them and cause we were going to start, start this company. So we, I sent the letter, I emailed Kevin Johnson. That was what, two years ago? Never heard from him since. And so, you know, it never happened. So we just, and, and then the guys, since that never happened, the guys started arguing about doing the, because we had a, a couple of people that wanted to do it privately. And then, uh, they, you know, they started arguing out businesses. They started arguing. I go, man, I, I'm not into this kid stuff, man. I, I'm, I'm gone. I'm out. And I let it go. And I never did anything with it. So I've, I've lived in that kind of a condition. Uh, the military often houses us in like a, a boxcar or a uh-huh. Connex or a, a UN container. And yeah, you can put, you can put a couple people, you can put three people in there yeah. pretty easily. I mean, yeah. that might be cramped, but you're giving them a place to stay well, and, and a, and a, a lot of platform. Cramped. Yeah, well, right. Yeah. That's really what it comes down to is you give people an opportunity to get dry, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, see, have some shelter, well, see, here, start a new chapter of their lives. See, it's just not housing that you're, that you're going to develop. Man, like for the city of Sacramento, there's a, back then there was a guesstimation of 2,600 homeless people in the city of Sacramento, registered in the city of Sacramento. So I said, okay, well, you know, we can do this with so much, but we can, we can make that happen. Put two to each house, you know, put out 1,500 of them. Mm-hmm. Done, right? Uh, uh, and then, and then uh, so I was thinking, but, you know, you can't really give any, uh, no one's ever given me anything. Right. You know, no one's ever said, here, Tony, here's a, here's a, here's a house, Tony, here, here's yeah. a car. No one's ever done that for me. So I believe, and if you give, if someone receives something for free, guess how much, how much, how much it's worth? Yeah, it's no Nothing. Value, right? It's zero value. Mm-hmm. So in order to give the, and, and let me tell you something, I talk to a lot of homeless people. I still do all the time. And, you know, some just want to be homeless. They don't want to follow rules. They, right. they want to do what they want to do. Live they outside do, the they, they, That's margins. what they want to do. Mm-hmm. You know, there are some, there are some that are mentally disabled sure. and, and some veterans. But so the, uh, your veterans, you house for free. Mm-hmm. And you're mentally ill, you have to give help for it. I mean, yeah. it, it is what it is, you know. But, you know, and what's happening with a lot of these mentally ill is their, their family's just saying, okay, well, we can't help you anymore. Bye. And they kick them on the street. Right. I've heard that story a lot of times. Sure. I'm going, yeah. you can't do that either. You know, you can't just, you know, I mean, if if my child was mentally ill or something, I wouldn't just kick it to the curb or kick him to the curb and say, 
Bye, Felicia. You know, yeah. I ain't got nothing to do with it. Let the city take care of you. That's not right either because now I'm burdening the city and the taxpayers with that problem. Right. You know, uh, I, me as a parent should be burdened a little bit by that. Sure. I, I mean, it's my child. Shit. You know, you, I can't just say, no, you take care of my kid. Don't we all wish? But that's not how it works. You know, so you got to make people responsible. Mm-hmm. You know, so I think if you're, if you're registered here in the city of Sacramento, if you're registered here, and, and, and you know they get paid. They get paid taxpayers' money. Right. You know they get paid about six hundred bucks a month. So I'm thinking, hmm. Okay. Well, there's a lot in the homeless community. There's a lot of gangs and drugs in the homeless community. You'd be surprised. There's a lot of it here in Sacramento. Uh, I, I have a drug guy that's going to help me clean that up in right. Sacramento that I'm working with, and he says, yeah, there's a lot of gangs and drugs hmm. in Sacramento. Yeah. He goes in order to clean that up. He goes. He goes. So you can't save everybody. You know. He goes. He goes. You got to put rules and regulations that come in to, to stay there. And I think, okay, well, wait a minute. Since the state is giving them money, why can't this, the city make up a little bit of that money? It's tax money, right? So I'm going, okay, well, look, they're making 600 bucks a month. We can house them for 100 bucks a month. Yeah. That'll give them a place to take a shower, eat some food, right? Uh, you know, comb their hair, blow dry their hair, do whatever they got to do. Get yeah. yourself in shape, in shape to go to get, get, get work or exactly. figure out what you no, no, watch, check this out. Of- I got something better than that, dude. It leaves you can have zero work uh, ability mm-hmm. or knowledge. You don't have to. All you have to have is two hands and two feet in the will in the will to make a buck. And I can I can and check this out. <laughs> it's called Project Cleanup Sacramento Downtown Sacramento. So from the edge of this. Your house to the other edge of this house, mm-hmm. from my doorway to the gutter, I should be responsible for because this is I'm renting this place and this is what I should do. Mm-hmm. So the city of Sacramento brings by a bunch of wheelbarrows, big shovels, and some brooms. Yeah, the homeless picks them up and comes into the cities, and we pay him my check because you got to tax them some. And loaves and fishes issues checks anyway, so they're already there. Right. So you come up to here, I pay someone ten dollars a week to come by once a week and clean this up. Yeah. And so would he. And so would she. Right. And so so now, if you get 100 people downtown Sacramento cleaning up, mm-hmm. downtown Sacramento is going to be pretty clean. Yeah. It has to be clean before. What do you do when, you have a, when you're having a party at your house? What's the first thing you do to the house before you, the people come over? You got to clean you up. Clean your house. Yep. So before Sometimes we, that's why I throw a party. <laughs> I'm looking at my house going, my house looks like shit. I better I throw a party. Gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get hoarse. That's the first thing I see. Yeah. That's what Pete does. See, not, but but no, but see, so so before you invite big business to come to Sacramento to open up shop, yep, you got to clean, clean it, it up. up. Yeah, you got to take the the homeless off the streets. You got to clean it up, clean up all the leaves, the garbage, the junk, and just clean it. Mm-hmm. it, it Sacramento sometimes you, you just want to get a big old water hose and just clean it. Mm-hmm. It's dirty. Mm-hmm. You know, you have empty buildings here. You have, uh, and I tell you what. <laughs> They're not like this. Uh, but there's empty buildings here. There's people that own these buildings, and they're sitting there empty. Right. They're waiting for this big form, this big rush of big business because the kings are coming or staying in the new arena. That's really not going to happen because you want me to tell you why? There's nothing here. We have nothing. You know, what would you bring a big corporation here for? You either have a choice of San Francisco, L.A., it's like going to Fresno. Why would you go to Fresno? Well, there you are wouldn't. there are some there are some some reasons that you would compromise for okay. cost of land. Yeah, cost of land. If you have the space and there's some, you know, okay, hand, well, you can you know, get well, you can hire paying, people for cheap taxes. But your butt will will will, will curve that will curve that enthusiasm. Trust yeah. trust and belief. <laughs> That's true. So, what would bring you here? Because you're going to pay out your butt for taxes. So, what would someone bring you here? Well, you have to have... And my people can't park. I don't have to bust them in from somewhere. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> park on Richards Boulevard, buddy. Yeah. yeah but see but the, what, brings, the, what would bring me here yeah. is if I, you know, looked at the population here and I saw that, man, this is a nice place to do business. I got great people. There's schools around here where I have an educated, um, you know, workforce. And I can put people to work and make some money. Really? I mean, that's why yeah. I would come here. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I mean, it's it's a great place to live. It and, is a great. It's an awesome place, to right? Live. And and if I could if I could house my business here effectively, then you know a lot of See, my that, that's the taxes are, are a big thing. That's where he's going to fold, right. and that's where you will fold. Yeah. It, it, Sacramento is a beautiful. I love Sacramento. Yeah, yeah it's I, great. I, I'm born and raised here. You do love Sacramento, but but you know what? Check this out. <laughs> taxes are going to kill you here. You you would know. You, you dude. 
Every t- every year I cry every year. Once a year I cry when it's time to pay Uncle Sam. Yeah. I'm going, huh? Where the- if they're saying they made all this money, where's it at? Yeah. I have no idea. Yeah. Because, you know, if, if I made this much money, I should live in on a, a mansion on a mountain. That's what they're saying I made. They're yeah. saying I owe this much money, but I don't get it because mm-hmm. I don't live on a mansion on a mountain. I have an old mole on a hill. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. so, yeah. I have a mole hill over there. You know, and, and, but that's California. But see, something's got to change. Mm-hmm. And I have an idea. I have an, I have an idea. If you like the show, and you know you do, send us some pictures of your movies. Don't do that. Support the show. There are three ways you can support us. Number one, go to iTunes or Stitcher or wherever you listen to podcasts. And leave a five-star rating in with you. It helps with the show metrics, and it helps us get better placement. Number two, visit our website, www.breakitdownshow.com. We've got an Amazon and an eBay link. Same Amazon, same eBay, you know and love, but they give us a little kickback when you get to their site from ours. And number three, leave comments about the shows that you like. We want to know what you think, how you feel. Tell us how to make the show better. We greatly appreciate it. Now back to the show. We like boobies. So as we clean up Sacramento, I have a way to entice big business here. Uh, I have a way to make Sacramento kind of pop. Uh, you know, I'm still, here's, here's what it is. I'm old enough to understand business mm-hmm. and young enough to, to still have fun. Yeah. You know, so, you know, we got to put something that pops in downtown Sacramento, man. Well, number one was we need a riverfront. Mm-hmm. But, dude, we're the capital freaking city of California. That's true. We need more than a riverfront. We need something that's going to outdo anything in the city, in the state of California. We need to have people coming from Utah, Arizona, mm-hmm. Uh, Florida coming here to check this shit out. Really make Sacramento a destination. Oh yeah, man! But, but, but here's where here we go again. What is it? Parking in a hotel. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but see, but, but, but me as a mayor, I'm going to fix that because mm-hmm. uh, I'm tired. I'm sure people in Sacramento are tired of getting uh, uh, parking tickets. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm positive of it. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, there's a lot of things, uh, simple fixes that we can do. And I mean simple, which are simple fixes that we can do even before they start building the parking lots. That'll stop a lot of this stuff. Give us the big three. Uh, the big three of what? Big, simple fixes. Well, number one was make the, make, cause we get a lot of cops that come in for court, especially right here around the courthouse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> make them park in the parking lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's, they have parking lots, especially just for them, mm-hmm. but they never park in them. Mm-hmm. They park on the streets. They take up parking spaces. They take up this and that. Watch this. We, right here, every Tuesdays and Thursdays, they come to, it says no parking from such, such street time sweeping. to, to yeah. two o'clock or 12 o'clock, whatever it is. Street, street sweepers. Yeah. Ask me when's the last time I've seen a street sweeper in the last two years. <laughs> I haven't. You never seen it? No, I they don't. It. But if you parked it, you still get a ticket. <laughs> How are you going to yeah. give me a ticket for something you're not doing? Yeah. That's crazy. But no one ever far, far argues that part. Yeah. You know, I'll give you one, man. I got a ticket one time. I saw the sign, and I was in the wrong. I parked there when it said not to park there. But the street sweeper went by. Saw him. This was years ago. I don't know if they still have street sweepers. I haven't seen them either. <laughs> but the street, I watched them. Oh, the street sweeper. Okay, it's done. I'm technically not supposed to park here until 6 a.m. It's 5.15. But the street sweeper's gone. Yeah. I saw him sweep. He's not coming I'm back. not in his way anymore. And I parked there. Ticket. Well, come on. That's kind of your fault, though, bro. I get it. No, no. I get it. I, I, no, I get it. I, like I said, I'm I, acknowledging that. That shit said don't park here until 6 a.m. And I parked it before 6 a.m. But I parked on, you know that swirly shit and the road is wet and mm-hmm. the brushes. That, clearly the street sweeper had been. Well, you know, they're they're going out for hard on parking tickets right now. They yeah. really are. Yeah. I parked my, I take care of my trainer, mm-hmm. Jerry Jacobs, who we take care of. His, you don't have very many families. Or, you know, mm-hmm. they just don't. We take care of him. Yeah. And my wife is his caregiver, mm-hmm. uh, you know, legally. And so. Uh, you take care of Jerry Jacobs? Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, he took care of me when I was a kid, so it's time to right. pay back. Man. Right? Pay back. And so, and we don't charge the city. We don't. We don't get paid for. It. We do it because mm-hmm. that's, I, I, that's I, what you do. So that's yeah. What yeah. I own right. Yeah. So I park in front of this place, right? And he has one of the places that they, you know the parking there. They end it, and there's, yeah. it doesn't say no parking. Right. It it doesn't say loading zone only. It doesn't say anything. There's no painted anything on it. Right. I go in to go. Yeah, you know, I go feed him. I go clean his house and I wash his dishes and all that stuff and make sure he's got to take his pills and do all that crap. I come out, there's a ticket in my car. I'm going... Come on. No, seriously. Yeah. I haven't even paid it yet. 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fight it. Okay. But you have to. <laughs> now they want you to pay it first, then you can fight it. But yeah. they already have your money. <laughs> they don't, yeah. they don't want to give a shit. They say, "Oh no, you can't fight this one." That, that's when you know there's a system in Chicago. Same thing. You just go up to a little window, like, "Do you want to wait a couple hours for court? Do you want to pay this and go home?" You're like, "I'll just yeah, pay and go home." Yeah. And go home. See, I mean, Never mind. you know, we're we're not there yet. We're not that big. We're we're not that busy. We don't have that many people. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's other concerns. We have we have another elite problem. I mean, dude. I mean, they're putting some. They're, they're, I can't believe. Well, okay, whatever. Um, but they blew so much money. Uh, I mean, dude, I know a guy. I'm not gonna say no names or something, but there's a guy that had a building. He wanted to put a bar in the backside of his building because he had a restaurant in front. He would put a bar in the backside of his building, so right. he wanted to fix up the alleyway. So he goes to the city of Sacramento, gives you money to, for to fix up the front or the back end of the alleyways and stuff for your business, right? So he says, uh, uh, he says, oh yeah, he did a nice little cement piece. I figured, you know, a couple, maybe uh, top, top, top ends, two hundred thousand bucks, right? Wasn't that nice? I mean, there's no gold on the floor, nothing, but it was, it was nice. Yeah, inviting. And he has a nice back of his barn in the alleyway. It's all fixed up. I'm like, okay. He tells me, yeah, man, the city gave me a million dollars. I'm going, oh hell no, you didn't pay no million dollars. Hell no. You, there's no way in the world you can tell me you paid a million dollars for this. Right. I didn't say that to him, but I said, so how much did this cost you? 300 300000 dollars. I'm going really. I go, what did you do with the rest of them? I put it in my pocket. Say what? Yeah. I know. So I'm going. Doesn't the city have anybody to? I, I mean, watch. I can get someone off the soup line and say, hey man, look, check this out. Who, who's an estimator over here? Who's a, who's a construction worker here? That's out of work. You come with me, you know, and say, "Hey, look, you work. You not work for the city. Your job is to. I'm not going to say I'm going to start cutting people off, mm -hmm. but I'm going to start making them responsible. Yeah. So I'll have you say, okay, you want you have a business downtown. You want to make fix up the front of it, right? Okay. Yeah. And I'm saying, uh, what's the city? It's in sort of the popular area. So I'm so I'm saying, okay, yeah. So bring me an estimate. I'm going to have my guy, I wouldn't show me the plans of what you want to do to make right. sure the city's going to approve it. So you bring back some plans and say, this is what I'm going to do. The city says, okay, yeah. So that show this to my estimator that you don't know about. Yeah. And you say, okay, he goes down to your place and you come back with an estimate of a million dollars. He comes back with a and says, 300. Yeah. Guess what? You got a problem. Yeah. You know what your problem is? Now we're going to give you two. You come with the other hundred thousand dollars you want to do it. Not kick rocks. Bye. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you don't lie to the city and try to get away with something like that, well, that's with a million dollars. I'm really, dude, really? Yeah. You know, that, that's just ripping us off. How, yeah. how stupid can the city be? You know, I, I mean, I, I mean, that, that money could go to Houston and something else to really help man, some people out. The rest of that money, we have, we have, we can, we can do, we can feed our elderly. That's yeah. a lot of people pissed off about parking tickets. Yeah. Yeah. They ended up you know? in that guy's pocket. Because I got to be honest, when I come to Sacramento, I think about parking tickets. Oh, yeah. Because yep. I know, know I'm going to get one. Yeah, you probably got one right now. I know, right? Yeah. Front, For so parking legally. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that'll teach you. That's yeah. going to be expensive. Yeah. Hey, man, I'll tell you what. Right here in front of your place, you got to don't park from here back. But that curb isn't painted red. No, and you know what, too? That sign that says from here to the corner, it's yeah. kind of an angle it's so turned. you can't see it. Yeah. Yeah. It's turned. And, and you know it's what? Dirty. They still give tickets. So I day. bet they do. And I told that parking I bet they guy. Go try to fight I, it, too. I go, I go look at that, that sign. I go, dude, that's that's cold, bro. And they just laugh. They don't yeah. give a shit. Yeah, they, 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 don't. they don't care. One bit. You know, he goes, well, he parked here. Wrote the ticket. I got to shift gears, man, because I am convinced that you are the common sense candidate. And you know, man, I, I want you to win anyway. Me too. I think that this city needs you. <laughs> well, I want to shift gears, and, and, and right. there are a couple of stories that I want to hear from you. But but let me just ask you this to close up the political segment. Do you think you're going to win? I win everything. I don't go in there for second place. Second okay. place is just the first loser. <laughs> First to last. All right. I love right. it. I love yep. it. Now, last election, you had it on your mind to be the mayor of Sacramento at that point. Mm -hmm. And you were, I don't know, were you on the ballot or were you running as a writing candidate? I was going to do a write-in, but, you know, I really didn't do that either. Mm -hmm. You know, I just, it was too late. I wasn't yeah. ready. Yeah. I held off. So the sec this is your first official time, mm -hmm. but you've been thinking about it for a while. Oh, yeah. So your first official time, if you don't win... You gonna keep at it? You gonna come back? No. If I here's what it is, Sacramento. You know, uh, there's a lot of things that I know mm -hmm. ab about Sacramento that regular people don't know. The people that go to work and go home and go to bed yeah. that don't know. But Sacramento's getting ugly, and if we don't really watch what's going on out there, man, mm -hmm. we're gonna be in a heap of trouble. 
You know, they're, I, obviously I own a bell bond business. This is not because I own a bell bond business, but it's because I live and play in Sacramento. Yeah. That, you know, it's getting crazier. You yeah. know, if we don't watch it, man, mm-hmm. if we don't watch who the lawmakers are and what laws they're passing and what, you know, all this, they're trying to repeal a lot of the laws that passed. Right? And here's something stupid. <laughs> Every bell bondsman is in, in the state of California, you go, how dumb are they? AB 109. I'm not saying everyone that came out of AB 109 is a criminal and everything, but you were in prison. Um, you know, there could be those ones that changed their ways and because learned their lesson, but I'll tell you what, mass majority of them went back and yeah. or committed another crime. Mm-hmm. So they just put them out in the streets to commit more crimes. That's all that happened. Yeah. They, really didn't, they really didn't change anything. I mean, they dropped a lot of felony crimes to misdemeanors, and I'm thinking, why would you do that? If it was a felony, then it's a felony. Why are we going to let it go? I'll tell you, oh, no, we'll drop it down to misdemeanor. Oh, you know why? So they can keep you out of county jail. Mm-hmm. Because county jail needs room for the prison inmates that are coming from prison. And, you know, and, and so now they're only they're only holding the hardcore inmates. So now, e, e, watch this. You're ripping off a house. You continuously rip off a house, houses. You never really get caught. Yeah. And so then what's gonna, you're going to meet your friend here and he's like, man, it's... Man, let's, let's, let's do something bigger. Maybe yeah. a bank or something. Who knows? I'm just saying. Yeah. Something bigger than ripping off houses. Let's, let's go carjack somebody. Right. You know? Let's do something more crazy. To, and now you're so confident. You go, fuck, I never Just the caught. incentive to do more crime. Yeah. I mean, because you, know? you don't get caught. And right. when you, and let's say you got caught once. And guess what? Ripping off a house with no gun, no nothing. It's a freaking misdemeanor. You go to jail. They won't even hold you. Fuck. Right. Go by. Here, come to court next month. Next month. Okay, see you then. You ain't going to show up. Right. Well, you know, that's just stupid. You know, what are you going to do? Turn yourself into county jail and prison? Yeah. No. So you don't show up. So, you know, then you go on to worse and harder and worse and worse crimes. And that's just, that's just, that's, that's a fact. That's, that's already been tested. That's right. how it goes. They start with little shit, you know, with the big shit. And, and so, somewhere along the line, until it affects you or your family. Right. Then, it, then, oh, we need to change this law. No, you should have changed that law a long time ago. Because it didn't affect you at this time. Doesn't mean it has to change what now affects you. You know, it's, it's almost the opposite of your Broadway problem. They're opening up the pathway through jail. So, yeah, you're going to get arrested. You're yeah. going to get sent right through and get right back out. And it just becomes a mill where they process people through. And yeah. so no, one, no one's getting the help they need. No. You know, they're incented to do and, more. Crime. And only bad shit happens in that mill. Right. Only. Yeah. Because they're not going to really get a job. Mm-hmm. You know, so now they become they, – they're, they're uh, dependent on the system. Occupation becomes getting really? arrested and, and crime. Right. Well, you can watch this. I'm not in favor of beating the crap out of kids. I'm not saying that, but I am. I'm in. I, you know, I got ass weapons when I was a kid. You know, and, and I turned out okay, but because I needed them. Debatable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no, wait. Let me tell you something. Let me, there's, let me, and, and, and here's what I got from hearing kids talk. And I thought about it. I'm going, well, he's right, dude. That's what he's been doing his whole life. Watch this. I'm not saying my my brother got one ass whooping his whole life. Never did anything wrong again. Mm-hmm. He's just a great kid. My sister got screamed on her one time in her life. Never did nothing wrong again. She thought she never, that didn't work on you. You on the other hand. Yeah. Me on the other hand. Yeah. Uh, if you hold me every day, and check this out. I got this. No, I'm not lying. I got ass kicking every single day. And there was times, because I've been driving since I was 10 years old. So I'm yeah. 52. And back, you know, 42 years ago, there was nothing. He was second. driving when he was 10. Yeah, I bought my first car when I was 10. I bought a Simca. <laughs> Knows no, more no. about there not being parking downtown than <laughs> anybody, anybody 52 years old. <laughs> yeah, right? Well, so so this, I'm, I'm serious. So I'm cruising Franklin Boulevard. Go, I come home, do this. My dad say, okay, just don't be home no later than 1 o'clock. Yeah. And here's me, though. <laughs> so so my dad, so, so you know, cause I was born, my dad was born in Mexico. I was brought up very Hispanic. And back, even the Mexico now these kids are running the streets at 10, 11 o'clock at night and they sure. have school the next day. Yeah. I, and I'm going, what the hell are you doing? You know, yeah. so, but and that's just how they are. So, you know, I, I if, like if I'm out at a, at a party, I'm at a house party mm-hmm. and it's, and it's popping, there's a lot of women everywhere, the music's good, you know, and I'm, I'm having a good old time. Yeah. And it's one o'clock or quarter till, shit, I'm staying. Yeah. You know, if it's two o'clock, I'm like, man, this party's worth it, man, I'm staying. <laughs> yeah. You know, if it's three o'clock, man, it's, and it's kicking off, I'm hooking up, I'm staying. Yeah. So I'll, I'll suffer the ass kicking when I get home. Right. You know, because the later I was, the more of an ass kicking I got. Right. Hey, dude, sometimes it was worth it. Sometimes it wasn't. I went home, I made it home by 12 or 1. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Or most of the time I didn't. But because of those times, you know, and, and, and let me tell you something, you know, because I lived in South Sacramento, I grew up in 24th and Meadowview. And for those who don't know 24th and Meadowview, back in the day, it was kind of a crazy area to be. And, you know, so, you know, on the, on, on the time, there was a couple of times in my life that because I went home, because I was already late and I was already getting my ass kicked and I was good with the ass kicking that I was receiving, I went home. And there's two instances that I went home. That I'm glad I went home because one guy went to prison 
and then the guy died. Mm. So, you know, because of those two times, you know, I remember them now. And back then, you're a kid, you're not really thinking, you're just thinking, oh, you know, whatever. And, you know, you're not really thinking about it. Right. At least I didn't. Mm. It was part of life, and it went, we went on. But, you know, now that you're older, you're thinking, man, you know, two times in my life, man, that, you know. Could have uh, been you. Yeah, it yeah. could have been me. And so, and, you know, it, it's just time has changed until now. Yep. So, so like I said, I was, how we started on this, you said, uh, I was talking about uh, ass kickings. I bought a kid from jail, 22, 21, I don't remember how old he was, 20. Comes out and he goes, yeah, man, and he's just a, kind of a punk. And I'm, th- and I'm talking to him kind of like he's a punk, you know. Because, you know, you don't let them get over because they do, they, they, they start to get their chest out more. Right. So I'm kind of checking them, you know. And I, and then we start talking. It goes from being a punk to just being normal. And we're talking. He goes, man, he goes, man, I've been doing time my whole life, man. I'm like, dude, you're only like 21, whatever you were, whatever, yeah. whatever you was. Right. right. You haven't even really I, yeah, started yeah, yet. You haven't even started. Like underwear over there. Yeah, right. <laughs> and he goes, no, That's man. That's a true story. Yeah. And he, goes, he goes, no, man. He goes, man, I've been doing life time my whole life. I go, man, how do you been doing time? He goes, man, my mom put me a time out. He goes, it's just oh, like shit. doing time over here. He says the same thing. He goes, man, it's, it's, it's three meals in a cot over here. Yeah. He goes, I'm in timeout. He goes, I'm in timeout for an hour. He goes, I'm cool. Just stay out of the wall. He goes, I'm cool with that. Because I can go start this wall all damn day long. Yeah. It ain't nothing to me. Yeah. And I thought about it. And I thought about it. So you get these kids in there. So I ask them. I go, hey, man, did you, ever do, did you ever get to put in the corner? Yeah, man. And most of them have. Right. I go, is that a reason why? It just goes, conditioned them. Yeah. It's like conditioning your kids to do time. To sit in jail and do nothing. Yeah. That's what they're conditioning. You know, I'm going. Because I talk to a lot of people, because I'm nosy, you know, I want to know right. what, what's ticking in their head. Because yeah. I know what was ticking in my head at the time, and I just didn't give a shit. But, yeah. you know, so I wonder if that's the same thing they're thinking of what I was thinking, or are they thinking something different? Mm-hmm. But they're just used to doing time. Yeah. And I'm going, oh my God. So I, I We're like, conditioning after, these after kids. about the third or fourth kid that, that's, that I said, hey man, you ever, you know, sit in the corner? You, yeah, my mom always told me in the corner. I go, maybe is that where you got to? used to? Maybe, yes, because I do the same thing in jail. So I, I think it's grooming kids to do time. Mm-hmm. Watch. It's either right or wrong. And for me, I'm not saying everybody, and so everybody's different. Everybody raises their kids their own way. That's however you raise your kid is, is, is fine with me, none of my business. I don't care. So however you raise my, my child, you know, it's my business, and you shouldn't care. But, like, I, I one time, my daughter was pretty straight. I was pretty, not real strict. I let her have a life. But I have, a, like, when she was here, if she was here today, she'd be sitting right over there, not saying a word. Yeah. Because that's what she's supposed to do. Because mm-hmm. uh, we're adults and we're talking, we're doing our thing. Right. She doesn't get involved. She doesn't get involved in that. Um, if she's out being a kid, if you had kids here, she'd say, Dad, can I go over there and play? I go, yeah, I don't know. You have to ask Mr. Yeah. Yeah. So. And she would ask you if she can play right. with your kid before she did it. Because she has manners. It's right. called manners. Yep. It's not being mean. Consideration. Yeah. yeah. It's having manners for the house that you're in, you know? That's right. Um, and you know, like I told my daughter, you can run around our house all down the long. I don't really care. But you go to a son house, house and run around. I'm kicking your ass. I'm running stuff. It's not your right. house, mm-hmm. you know. So she understood that. There's rules and regulations of right. life, you know. And so you know, like today, and 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 some of the spoiled kids I grew up with, some of the parents that spoiled the crap out of their kids, some of the kids I bailed out. Some of yeah. the kids are Hayward, some of them. My daughter lives in Florida. That has a job, doing things, doing great things, buying houses out there. I mean, she's doing things. Yeah. You know? So maybe it's okay to be a little strict with your kids. Maybe it's okay. I'm not saying to beat your kids. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying to be a little strict. Maybe stop giving them everything they want. So when they go home and go, Mom, can I have a soda? They're playing their game. They're going, not taking their eyes off the going, Mom, can you give me a soda? Yeah. Get your damn self. Fool up. You know? <laughs> right. You know, also, I just got home. Why don't you get up and acknowledge me? Yeah, yeah right? You know, right. there's just not even enough of that. Oh, yeah. man. I remember the days when I got, we got home. My dad got home. Well, you know what my dad did? He got home from work. He'd go sit on the couch in a, a, a little footstool. Yeah. He'd go, hey. He'd say in Spanish, Tony. He said, come, come take on. my boots off. Come take my boots off. Yeah. Guess what? I had to go take his boots off. Yeah. And, and you know what? That was just what I did. Because I wouldn't, I would, my dad was only 5'4". I would, I would never say nothing to my dad. My dad would, get out of here. Uh-huh. My mom is 5'5". I think she's 5'2", but she might get mad. <laughs> but, but my mom, she's 70. Your mom is 5'9". She was a supermodel. <laughs> yeah, she was. She was, no. Former Miss Guadalajara. <laughs> right? Let's go see anybody. And then, uh, but, you know, even now, she's 75, 76 years old. And, you know, we joke now because my mom likes to joke. She's mm-hmm. she's a Renault, so she likes to joke. <laughs> <laughs> if you know her family, you'd understand. And then, uh, so she likes to goof off. So, and so we can goof off, but... Like, if uh, I would never, ever, like, cuss in front of my mom right. on, on a reel. Mm-hmm. You know, we could bullshit, we, you know, but I don't drop F-bombs. I don't, right. I, I, you know, That's your mom. My, my mom would, 
That's yeah. your mom. That's, that's my mom punching me in the face. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, you don't do that. But, man, kids nowadays, mm -hmm. they come to my office and their mom's sitting there Fuck, man, look at that. I'm going, what? Yeah. You, wow, dude. Uh, man, there's soon a couple of times. Uh, man, if you want, I'll put him right back in jail right now. We, we good. Yeah. Oh, no. He, he's just a little upset right now. That's, see, mom, that's your problem. That's you, right. Yeah. You know? That's right. And, and it's crazy, man. You don't, you know, I'm not saying I'm the world's best dad, but I'm the world's best dad. Um, uh, but that's just he's the way probably, he's, he's probably all right. Yeah. Now, you know, I know Pete's daughter and Pete knows my kids, man. Yeah. And I know that, you know, there's a time and a place and you give them plenty of room right. to figure out. Now, the thing that I once learned, cause my son was a pain in the ass when he was a teenager and you know, he, we had this friend named Alma and she always used to say, Oh, that's my baby. My Herbie. He's, I love him. I love, and I would say, who are you talking about? <laughs> he's so sweet. Who? <laughs> and she would say, here's the, what you need to know. And this is a lesson that I learned from Alma out of many lessons I learned from Alma. She said, you know what? When he's at my house, he's the sweetest boy you ever know. Now, if he chooses to test the limits when he's at home in front of you and he knows better than to come to my house and test him in front of me, then you, he's doing all right. Doing all right. Yeah. And that made me think, you know what? You did a I good got, job. I got him all wrong. That's right. You know, he's all right right here. Yeah. I know when he goes out, nobody has anything bad to say about him. Yeah. So you did a good job. There's man. just not enough of that kind of, I don't know what it is, man. What do we do about that? How do we make it so that the way that we feel, the way that we've raised our children permeates and that we get more people to behave like that? Well, there, you know, you can probably start to stop buying them everything they ever wanted in their yeah, life. Yeah. You know, and I have friends and family members that do that too. You know, I'm thinking, why, why are you having a party for him? He has everything. You, know, you right. can't buy him nothing. You know, I'm I mean, also going to say this, man. I have a client who is, uh, has done very, very well for himself. Very well healed. Um, and they have two daughters, huge house. They make the daughter share the room. Good. Yeah. They, Good. they, she, and you know, mom, the mom, she's, this couple, they've independently of each other done very well for themselves. And mm -hmm. now they're married and they got gobs of money. <laughs> but you ask her, how come the girls are sharing a room? You got to, she's about to be a teenager. I don't care. Yeah, that's right. She has to learn to be with her sister. She had, they have to learn to take care of each other. That's right. Stuff like that. They always, they, are they mess kids with have to know dad's Greek, mom Spanish. Wow, so I knew it was messing somewhere. Spanish, yeah. huh? Right, right. Yeah. 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 See, that sounds, but still, that it like is a, a value yeah. system yeah. that, yeah. you know, was ingrained older, in that yeah, old world style. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, because you want to say, and I, you know, I sound like I'm an angry old man, but you notice that kids often don't have that respect for, for their mom. I, I, mean, I don't know how many times I've seen kids come up to their mom and say something like, I'm hungry. Yeah. Okay, yeah, right. great. Well, I'm about to fucking stab your neck back here. You don't go <laughs> to your mom and say, I'm hungry. Yeah. You know, you, you get fed, yeah. but why not, you know, be polite? And granted, it's in the house, and they'd probably be great in somebody else's house, but... Maybe. But you have to check that. Well, Just every now and then, you need to have, you know, the bear paw on the chest and say, hey, you need to try that again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, you know, I, I think, you know, people said, well, you don't want your, your kids, because someone said about my daughter, you don't want your daughter to be scared of you. Yeah, I do. You know, she better, she better understand that I can put any given time. Yeah, hey man, I love my dad. Me, I can't, I hang out with my dad. We, uh, He's my homeboy. Uh -huh. But when I was a kid, mm -hmm. I knew exactly where my place exactly. was. Exactly. And what I I'm feared saying. my dad's. I, I'm not saying he wasn't a kind, you know, gentle, right. all right. that stuff. My dad treated me right. Right. But, I, but if I got out of line, boy, I might get checked. Yeah, you know it what? might not feel good. Yeah, you know, my, my I got beatings every day, but, but I deserved it. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I'm, I'm openly telling you, I deserved it. Shit. I can't, when I got out of yeah, I can't say that I ever walked away from a whooping that I now look back on and think, I wasn't doing anything. Yeah. I was always doing something. Always doing Sometimes something. I got whooped for something that I wasn't doing, but I was doing something else. Yeah, that's I right. had it coming. That's right. That's you know, right. I know you're doing something, you that's little right. badass. See, see, so. you're okay. See, you think like I do. Yeah. Like, there was times when I got caught for something I didn't do. Uh-huh. But I'm thinking, that's something I, I didn't get caught for that I did. That right. It's just payback. Okay, I'll, I'll take it. I, I'm down with it. Because yeah, I was a troublemaker. Yeah, you I think I broke that window. I, I didn't break that window. Yeah. I did steal a snicker bar. Yeah, <laughs> see, see. Yeah. So I'll just take I'll take the ass open for that one that I didn't get it for. And right. just, I'll, I'll, okay, well, I did it. I All may right. have thought it was an injustice at the time. But now I look back and I go, man, that day I got an ass whooping for breaking the window. I did steal that snicker bar. Yeah, I don't think I've ever so, done that. I, hey, I was before we close up, will you tell yeah. us your Bruce Willis story? 
Okay, watch this. So, we're in L.A. Uh-huh. It, it, was, it was about 1990. And if we remember. rewind, at the time, you were... Uh, you had championship to defend, right? So you were a standing champion at the time. Is that true? No, I think I just won my second one. Oh, okay. Because it was 1990, and I had my vet. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I had my vet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 1980, 89. Yeah. So I, this I, is... I just my, don't forget, I, I might, I might nobody's ever given run. Tony the Tiger Lopez anything. Nobody's ever given anything to him. But he had a vet. But it wasn't given to him. He had to beat it out of the side of somebody's face. Yes, so. <laughs> exactly. You know? Hey, you know? Uh, and so me and a buddy of mine, we used to, I used to go to LA all the time mm-hmm. in Hollywood. And, and I'd stay there for a couple of weeks, sometimes I mean, a couple times a month here, just living in all the hotels, just party, right? That was my release time, you know? So so uh, me and a buddy of mine were in LA, and I just bought this drop top vet, right? It was polo green, it had the champagne interior, it was sweet. And then, I, I, it, and then back then, Dayton's were put on with the, with the knockoff, right? Yes, knockoff. yes. Uh-huh. Dayton made me a pair for my vet with a bolt pattern. It was a, I had a bolt pattern, 20, 20 inch Dayton's made back then for the vet. Wow. Uh, yeah, they, I called them, they made me some. And so they actually started selling them. I've seen other vets with them, so I know they started selling them. Anyways. <laughs> So I had a set of Dets, uh, Dayton's on there, and, that, and watch this. And I don't know how you did it, but I took my car down because it was kind of high. You know, it was three inches of high, right? I go, man, it looks so much cooler if it was like another inch lower. All right. So I took it down to a place called G12. It's not even there anymore. G12 in Sacramento. Mm-hmm. They lowered my front end another. It came, I think the front end came down an inch. I think the back end came up down about an inch and a half, I think. I don't remember. But it wouldn't come So I lowered it, a, a Corvette as much as I could lower right. it. Right, yeah. And so... And so then we're, and then, I, and then I used to paint cars, right? So then I went and bought a Testarossa kit, you know, for the Corvette. Yeah. Sure. So I took it to my garage and I put it on and, you know, I did it all myself. And then I painted my garage. And then I painted it all then, put, put a green, uh, uh, painted a polo green again, I put a gold flake in it, and a, 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 a mini flake. And then uh, there's no doubt that you are a Mexican. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So and, wait a minute, polo green with gold metal flakes. Yeah, and oh, wait, no, check this out. And then, there was a guy named, na- named Mike Klein who was a big time pinstriper here uh-huh. in Sacramento, and he pinstriped cars like the Autorama and stuff, you know. So I took my car to Mike Klein and told yeah. him I want two king lines and you know something on the back tail light and some over the, the yeah. front emblem. He did it up. I went to nice. the back of my garage. I, I color sanded it and blacked and cured the crap out of it. And that's back in the day when you had critical animals, lacquers, yeah, and all that stuff. Right. In your garage. Yeah. yeah. No yeah. mask. No. <laughs> no mask. Mask for what? <laughs> if I had a mask, I couldn't see. No. I so, scuba diving. Yeah. And so, uh, <laughs> so, I t- so you know, I buffed it all out, put it back all together. We're now, we're in, now we're in Hollywood, right? This we thing, haven't this even thing's... gotten to the story. <laughs> I'm like, this thing is blinging, dude. This thing, <laughs> no, hey, hey, dude, we... watch, watch this. It's bling. You go into the, you go into the, on the street, I know, all the flakes, just, they just run. They just move. It was bad, dude. Man. And so we're sitting on a stoplight, and there's two chicks in a, in a Mercedes Benz roll up on, and they're going to have a drop top. And so, you know, we've been... Well, who we are? We're going, hey, where are you going? You know, let's, let's go out. Let's uh-huh. do something, you know? And then hey, being fine we're, girls in the Mercedes. Yeah, and they're they're going, going, let's go. They're going, we're going to a party. Let's go. So we went to this party. And I remember what hotel it was. It was at the top of the hotel. And the hotel had a big suite on the top floor. I think it was like, I don't remember if there's like four suites that took up the whole, whole top floor or maybe mm-hmm. two. I don't remember. And then, uh, so we go to the door. And she goes, just say we're with, you're with us. And she didn't really say, say anything. So, okay, cool. So we're going up to them, you know, two of them, two of us, and we're going up. And they're like, hey, we're with us. Look, dude, the big dude at the door, right? Like, like he wasn't going to let nobody in. Shh, dude. No. Okay. This was the penthouse at the top floor of the Chateau Marmont. <laughs> and so yeah. so we go in there. And so, you know, we're bombed. You know, we've been drinking. So we're, we're never drinking more. And so we start drinking shots and stuff. And so, I don't know, hour, hour and a half, two hours, I don't remember. There's a group of men talking in the circle, right? Mm-hmm. So... I go in that circle because they're laughing and they caught my attention. They're laughing. <laughs> you want to know where the good time is? Yeah, so yeah. I want to go with this. I went over there and they laugh. I laugh. <laughs> and I'm laughing just like that, some dumb laugh. And they're looking at me like, hell are you? Who is this dude? Yeah, right? And so the guy next to me, he was to my, he was to my left, looks at me, came to at me. So he looks at me, he goes, and one time he looks at me, he goes, I know you. I'm going, he goes, I've seen you before. And I'm going, America's most wanted. I don't know. And, and I'm thinking in my head, oh crap. You yeah, know, yep, you're going to get found out. We're going to get kicked out. Uh-huh. So I'm thinking, 
And he's looking, but every yeah, you, know, you go to different towns, different places. You see, you think you see people that you've seen in Sacramento yeah. or something like that. Were you, were you, you might know for something like that. And I'm going, I've been doing that, not even around this, but I'm looking at this kind of one. Okay, but I'm thinking, nah, I'm drunk, whatever. So and then he starts asking me more questions. So you know, they laugh a few more times. I laugh a few more times. And so he goes, he looks at me again. He goes, here, because I just fought there. I just fought the week before. Okay. The, that's what it was. I had just yeah. fought the week before. Now, did and you so, show signs of having fought the week before? Not that before? Uh-uh. Okay, so nah. you still looked good. No, yeah. I was pretty. You weren't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ali ain't got shit on me. I was pretty. And so, and so you know, he looks at me and goes, boxer. And, and that's when I thought, oh, okay, shit. You know, because I, I want to go out, out of town to release, you know, to have fun. Yeah, right? have a good time. Because when you're here right. and everybody yeah. knows you, you can't act. Stupid or uh-huh. right. like you want to act. You know, I don't want to yeah. do nothing illegal, but you want to have fun. You, you, know you want to be anonymous. Yeah. yeah. And so, so when he said that, my whole, in my head, I went, oh, man. And, and so I guess, you know, I was like, yeah. And then at first he goes, you're a boxer. And I go, and he goes, he goes, he goes, boxer, right? And I go, I go, hmm. yeah. And he goes, you're Tony Tango Lopez. And I go, yeah. He goes, you just fought last week. And I go, yeah. He goes, man, good fight. And this next starts talking about the fight. Who'd so you fight? Like, I don't know. Uh, somebody. Somebody who lost. Yes. Yeah, so somebody who lost. Next. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, you know, I got to look that up. I, don't, I really don't know. I don't yeah. remember. And so, and so, uh, you know, so we're talking this, and he goes, oh, man, I'll hang out, this and that. So I'm looking around the thing, because now, now that I know it's Bruce Willis, I'm going, because someone, Wait, someone said his hold name. Hold on. You just, oh, somebody said his name. Yeah, someone said Bruce, he looks. You didn't recognize him? Well, he kind of looked, he kind of looked familiar, but you know, I'm drunk. Yeah, you're drunk. And I'm right thinking, nah. And so when he starts talking to me, and someone says his name, he's a I'm fight going, fan. Yeah, always has been. yeah. And I'm looking at him, going, "Oh snap, that's Bruce Willis." Yeah. And I'm going, "Oh man." And, okay. Now, did and, you know at the time as uh, how much he really uh, was a fan of? No, I, I, then I didn't. Okay. I, I didn't know he was a big boxing fan. I, yeah. I, you know, I found out later, but. And then, and for, see, me and my friend, we were, we were, man, we were dogs, but we were players, you know, play, yeah. play, yeah. And right. so, you know, and we go and do, I'll tell you what, we walk into a party, dude, we can, we can, we, well, Say no more. Yeah, right? Yeah. So, yeah. You're, so, so, you're 52 years old yeah, working right? this room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're in the bathroom, dude, I'm kidding. And so, and so, I know my wife, and so, that was me hit myself, <laughs> <laughs> so, so you know, so once again, I'm, maybe not for what you did right then, but you had to come. <laughs> yeah, right. And so, so you know, I'm going. Oh man, my friend. So, so I'm thinking about my buddy because you know, he's, you know, we're trying to pull some women. So that's right. So I'm going. Oh man, I hope he's not acting stupid. So, so that, that's the first thing I'm trying to think about. Oh no. So I'm talking to Bruce. And, you know, we're you know, so I start looking around, going, oh shit. Yeah, that so and so from that. Oh man. Oh, oh my. Oh my God. That's oh man. And so then I'm thinking, oh man, we got to go. Yeah, you know, because I don't, I don't want to embarrass myself or have my friend do something that will embarrass me. I don't, I don't, I, you know, I'm, I'm good. I, I say, hey man, so he goes, oh man, hang out for a while, you know. I go, hey man, thank you very much. I'm gonna go find my friend. So I walk off, and he's talking to some brat. So I'm going, hey, hey, I go, hey Miguel, man, we gotta go, bro. He goes, no man, he goes, no, I, I go, dude, we're going. So I grab my arm, I go, dude, we're going. I go look around you, man. He goes, what do you see? He goes, nothing. Because we don't watch a whole lot of TV. Back then, I, didn't, yeah. I still don't watch a whole lot of TV today. And so, yeah, I go, man, that, I go, look at the guys. I go, that's Bruce Willis, man. He goes, I go, that's like that one movie. He goes, oh, he goes, oh, oh, man. He goes, he goes, yeah, man, we better go. Yeah. I mean, he knew. Yeah. You know, and so we we took off. I say, I said, hey, thank you, but we're, you know, we're going to get out of here. You know, I don't want to embarrass myself. So we left and we had a good time. I mean, you know, uh, you know, cause I, I mean, and now he's got a story. He's like, man, one time I was throwing a party <laughs> in the top floor, and I just looked over, and I don't even know who let these guys in, but I was like, that's the shit. Hey, hey, that's that's shit. Right. Laughing and laughing. Yeah, I'm he keeps laughing. That fool out. And then I realized I probably shouldn't try to do that. Yeah. yeah. That's Tony's a tiger. That's crazy. That's yeah. crazy, dude. I mean, but, uh, but, uh, I wonder how he tells the story. I wonder yeah, because you know the, he does. When anybody named the champ shows up at your party, uh-huh. you're kind of stuck with him. You're stuck. Yeah. And this is the one thing that me and Pete always said because yeah. at the time that we first had this conversation, aside from your run-ins at Tower Records many yeah. years ago, I, we didn't really know anybody who you could legitimately say. You know, everybody goes, hey, yeah. how you doing, champ? But it's different. When I say, hey, how you doing, champ? I'm fucking talking to the champ. <laughs> no, <laughs> That's no. different. No, so, you know what's so funny? Like, there's yeah. a, but when... There's a couple things that you got to do when you're act when you say the word champ and you're talking to the champ. Like if he comes in, you're at a party and you're talking to some girl and he pulls the girl off of you, you can't say, "Huh, oh, okay, champ." 
Good no, work. Hey, good work. work. Yeah, what are you going to say? Yeah, you All gotta, right. Make you know me a sandwich. Okay, champ. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what, man? And it, it's funny because – I don't do that. Well, even when I was single, I'm married now. But you know, when I was single, man, I, I never did that. I, I don't, you know, if I see a guy and his girl, and I don't care how hot she is, man. I don't care if she's looking at me or not. And you know, because I'm not the best looking guy in the world, but so she's probably looking at me because I'm the chill. And so, you know, I mean, come on, man, I, I'm not gonna try to dog nobody. I don't do that sure. stuff. You know, I got, I had people. I, you know. Like girls, they come. Okay, watch. But we don't know that though, right? No, yeah, right. Yeah, right. See, that's what I'm saying. Room, it's we, like we used to make this shit up before yeah. we actually knew somebody who we could say the champ and, and was the champ. So we would go, "Fuck if I was like that." Uh, no yeah. telling. He's, I walk in the room and go, "Hey, how you, you might just be talking no, to my no. girlfriend." And I'm like, "Well, I guess we're broken up." I'm yeah. walking away. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta give up. I no, no. You know what, man? I, I'm, I'm not. You know, I come in an era where you don't do that. You know, that's not cool. Yeah. It's not like once. I'm like, if I don't know what she's taking, yeah, then I'm rapping. But as soon as she says I have a boyfriend, then went, okay, then it goes from, "Hey, girl, what's up?" You know, yeah. uh, some dishes. I go, "Hey, you know, okay, well, hey, you know." We yeah. can be friends or something. I mean, and I'm saying when I say be friends, yeah. I mean be friends. I mean we can because you got a man. I ain't trying to mess that up. You sure. Do what you got to do. You know. So I mean, maybe that's why I never got. Did you hear that, Paws? Did you hear that? <laughs> no, so, yeah, uh, no, no. It's like I tell people, it was, man. Look, there's been plenty of times in my life in, 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 outside the ring that I could have got a lot of trouble. Yeah. Sure. Doing stupid shit because yeah. women just with women because women just. They lose their minds. They lose their minds. They cause stupid shit to happen. Sometimes. Yeah, you know. It, it, but like I tell people, hey man, when I'm running for mayor, right? I, I, I'm talking to some big people right now, and they're asking me, "Is there anything in your past that we need to know about?" I go, "Look, man. I go. I've never. You'll never get me for rape for yeah. touching someone that doesn't want to be touched. You'll. I. You, girl ain't got to say no. Yeah. All she got to just tell me, mm, I'm gone. Bye. Yeah. They, it ain't worth it to me. It's, yeah. But I've always been like that. Right. Even before I was Tony the Tiger. That was my even because even because I've always thought I, that's I, just I how game, that's you know? how it is. That's yeah. just how my daddy taught me. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and, and you know, I knew no mean no meant hell no. Don't touch it. Leave it alone. That's See that no strong mean. father figures out there. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what the good you do in the world. And yeah. if you are a listener and you got a, a baby out there somewhere you're not taking care of, you better take care of that. Baby. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know what, man? As as much as we are always respectful of your time, we've been with you for a, a little over an hour, and that was we had technical difficulties before we got yeah. started. So you've been very yeah. Very was that kind of embarrassing for you? Because I was going to start capping on you. I know, man. I, 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 I was waiting awful. for it. No, I was like, it. I got no. these headphones on so I could pretend like it's not no, happening. I, I couldn't do that. But yeah. I, I, I wouldn't mind asking one more question. If you yeah, go ahead. Do it. I would love to hear a story that ends like this. Man, it's good to be champ. <laughs> no, I can't tell them stories. <laughs> tell them we'll off mic. Yeah, off the uh, mic, we'll tell yeah, them. Hey, 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 I can tell you. I got a lot of those stories. There's a couple things that I have to do. I have to mention Baby Bash because I've been trying to get that motherfucker on my show. And every time I say, hey, man, come do the show, he's like, no, oh, something else going on. Uh, but I say that because he's a big time fight fan. And I bet you. If you knew the date that you went to that party, we'd go, hey, there's the date. He'd be like, oh, you just got done fighting. I mean, he has an encyclopedic knowledge of boxing, then, then, and he's Mexican. Okay, so. then, then watch this. <laughs> then watch this. Tell, uh, was it Big Bash? I think it was Big uh, Pizzo said it was. So Pizzo was a friend of mine. He's, he was too short. He, uh, DJ, uh-huh. you know, in the trunk. That, he's a, that's that guy. Okay. He's, he, back in the day, was DJ Pizzo. Uh-huh. Okay, you know, he's a really cool guy. We were at Woodland. I think we were at the Woodland Lowrider Car Show, right? Yeah. And so guess who walks in? Uh-huh. Baby Bash. Yeah. And guess what? I'm standing in the back. I have my truck. I have a, I have a, I have a, I have a uh, it's a 1990, no, 2007 Ford Saving truck. Mm-hmm. They're rare. And, and I had just parked right there, just goofing off. And Baby Bash walking in. And he walks, he starts fighting. He goes, hey, man, Tony Tiger, what's up? Dude, he starts talking to him. And I'm going, hey, what's up? So we start talking, right? And so, you know, he, and then he knew Pizzo was. He mm-hmm. knew who Pizzo was. And so we just we BS him back and forth. And, uh, we, you know, we just, so next time, you, well, what I'm trying to say is next time I say, hey, man, I heard you know Tony Tiger. He's a friend of mine. <laughs> you heard it. You heard it. He's well, a real like good said, guy, man. You know, yeah, he's he is. Cool dude, I've yeah. for a long time. Yeah. Bro. Oh, you have? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but he's, he's busy. Guy. I give him a hard time because I say, hey, come on our show. And then, he, you know, he's off doing other shit. Yeah. The, uh, the thing is. I, that doesn't surprise me one bit because he's a big, big fight fan. Yeah, because I, I was kind of shocked. I'm going, how does he know who the hell I am? You know, because yeah. I, I was even old at that time. You know, I was like maybe it was years ago, like maybe 
four years ago, five years ago? Yeah. When he did that. Yeah. But still, you know, I mean, I mean, look at, I mean, I remembered who he was. <laughs> no, he's a, he's a, a history student, especially in the, in the sweet science. Oh, really? Uh, but it seemed like a really nice guy. Yeah, he's cool. Yeah, yeah. he is cool. So, um, and then the other thing. He is, actually offered us to hang out with him, but we were too old. We were, were like, we're old. Well, dude, just show how it is. He just shaved dude, your face. No, it's not even like that. Hair. He was playing in San Jose. <laughs> we went down to check out his show in San Jose, and we walked in there. Now, here's the thing, man. I, I give him all the credit in the world because he's in a game that is tough, just like you were in, and it came down to the same thing. He yeah. outlasted everybody else. Right, right. And so we go to his show is, is in San Jose and we went down there and checked it out and it was cool it was popping we were looking around though and man me and Pete we were the two oldest dudes in the room by 15 years yeah which is okay wow. we didn't mind but then uh, at the end of the show I mean you know I didn't, we didn't arrange anything yeah. with them or anything so at the end of the show Man, we got in the truck and cut. We had had a long day. We had did we did an interview earlier. We had right. a dinner party we went to. So so what you trying to tell me? You guys are just old? We were old. We <laughs> we were old. old. So we cut out of San Jose, man. It, was, it must have been about 1 in the morning. On wait, our way wait. home. Wait, wait. You left San Jose at 1 in the morning? Yes. Yeah. I, I know. It's just get started. <laughs> Come on, man. Don't look I, at me I, like I, that. I, I, I'm glad this is a podcast so nobody could see the way he looked at us. So... We leave about one, about 1.45 on our way home. The phone rings. He's like, where you guys at? I thought you was going to come kick. I was like, come on, man. We would have. See, I, I can't go to concert with you guys, man. Because if, if we go to, like, if Big Bash goes to San, San Jose again, and it's 1 o'clock in the morning, you guys are tired. Oh, no, no, no. Motel you, 6. We'll no, no, no. We'll do it. No, Motel yeah, we'll do it. 6, dogs. Because if we stay in. Okay. We're going. All right. We'll All right. go back to the hotel. That's fine. No, look, no. Yeah. You guys go back. I'm going to Baby Bash. I'm going oh, to I'll go. We're going to Baby Bash. Bash. So, look. This is, this is uh, yeah, let's, we'll set that up. Set it up, dude. I'm down. Thank you, man. No, yeah, thank you guys, man. You guys are always cool to talk to, man. Yeah. Wait. How can you guys only talk to me once in a while? See, I, but I come, up, I come hey, wait, up here every hey, wait, day. Hey, hey, I'm just on. trying not to get on nobody's nerves. No, no, see, you guys don't think around going, man, let's see, who else can you? Okay, well, we know we talked to him already. Then you, so one of you guys say, remember that fight, what's his name? Um, That fight we talked to a while back. <laughs> oh, fuck, we ought to go hey. talk to him again. Yeah, we got to. We just go talk to him we, and see what he's We don't doing. have anything else or, to do. Or you that or you see on TV. Hey, man, I heard Lopez running for mayor. Ha, let's go talk to that fool. <laughs> <laughs> I, bet you, I bet you he's just trying to get a parking spot. Oh, huh, right?